heaven was alive with anticipation because God was preparing to fulfill all that he had promised through the Old Testament prophets. These last details would complete the preparations for the coming of Messiah, the Savior and the Sovereign. The prophets Isaiah and Malachi had predicted that the advent of Messiah would be preceded by the coming of a prophet whose ministry it would be to introduce Jesus Christ the Messiah to the people of Israel. Luke preparing us for the record of the birth of Christ begins by giving us the record of the birth of the prophesied forerunner, John the Baptist. To begin the momentous events that would culminate in the birth of Jesus Christ, the angel Gabriel was sent from heaven to bring a message to a godly priest by the name of Zechariah, who was married to a woman named Elizabeth. These names seem to be highly significant, for Zechariah means Jehovah remembers and Elizabeth means the covenant of God. God is remembering his oath, and in fulfillment of his faithful promises, he is bringing events to pass that will bring Israel to the consummation of their long-awaited hope. Zechariah and Elizabeth were childless, and long had prayed that God would remove Elizabeth's barrenness and give them a child. The time came for the priestly division of Abijah to perform their services in the temple. It was customary to cast lots to determine what each individual priest would perform as his function. And on this occasion, the lot fell on Zechariah to preside at the altar of incense. Twice a day, he would go into the holy place and put incense on the altar of incense, which represented the worship of the people being presented to God. This was such a privileged position and responsibility it could be occupied only once during the course of a priest's life. It must have been with great joy that Zechariah, on the day recorded, went into the holy place to put incense on the altar. As he was performing this function, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and stood on the right side of the altar. He thought that this was an angel of death, and terror swept over him. But his terror was dissipated by the announcement, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. The angel announced the joyful news that his barren wife Elizabeth would conceive and would bear a son, and the name given to him was to be John, which means the grace of God. The angel proceeded to say that this son would bring joy not only to Zechariah and Elizabeth, but joy to the nation as well. For he was to be great in the sight of the Lord. He would be set apart from birth as a Nazarite, one dedicated to God's service. He would function as a prophet, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he would minister in the power of Elijah. And his function was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. He would prepare a people for the Messiah. This event was so startling the Zechariah asked for a confirming sign. And first of all, the angel identified himself as Gabriel, 
He had come from God. His message then would have been a true message, and there was no reason to doubt it. But then he said that because of Zechariah's unbelief, he would not be able to speak until after his son had been born. When Zechariah emerged from the temple, the people who had been concerned that he had tarried so long realized that he had seen a vision. They did not know what the vision was, for the announcement was not to be made by Zechariah, but was to be made by Zechariah's son, who was the appointed forerunner. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent to a virgin named Mary, who was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. They both were descendants of David and lived in Nazareth in Galilee. The angel came to Mary and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. God is setting Mary apart to a special privilege. Mary was deeply troubled at what this announcement would involve and the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will bear a son, and you will give him the name Jesus. The Greek name Jesus was the counterpart of the Hebrew Joshua. Joshua was the one who led God's people out of the wilderness into the blessings of the promised land. And her son, will lead people out of bondage to sin and bring them into the blessings that he will provide for them through his death. Mary was informed concerning the person of her son. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High God. He was not only to be the son of Mary, the son of man, but also the Son of God as well. And complete humanity and undiminished deity would unite in his person. The angel went on to explain the office that her son would hold. The Lord God will give unto him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. In 2 Samuel 7, 16, God had promised that one of David's sons would sit on David's throne and rule over David's house. And in Psalm 89, that promise was confirmed by God as a covenant. And Jesus Christ, Mary's son, is coming to fulfill the promises that David would have a son to sit on his throne and institute a reign of peace and righteousness here on the earth. While Mary was familiar with the promises concerning Israel's king, she did not understand how she could give birth to a son since she was a virgin. But the angel explained, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Jesus would not be born by natural conception. He would be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mary did not doubt the angel's announcement, but a confirming sign was given to her nevertheless. For Mary was informed that her relative Elizabeth was in the sixth month of her pregnancy. The will of God was not forced on Mary, but Mary voluntarily submitted herself to that which the angel had revealed to her. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Mary hastened down to Judea in order to confirm the sign that had been given to her by Gabriel. When she came into the home of Zechariah and Elizabeth and greeted them, the baby leaped 
in Elizabeth's womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she began to speak as a prophetess. She said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Under the control of the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth recognized Mary as the mother of my Lord. And that title had been given to the Messiah by David in Psalm 110. And the unborn babe also recognized the coming of the Messiah and leaped for joy in anticipation of the blessings that his coming would bring. Mary responded to Elizabeth's prophecy in a hymn of praise. She is praising God, whom she acknowledges to be her Savior. She did not claim sinlessness, but claimed God's salvation. She was not an exalted one. She was only a humble servant. But all generations would call her not the blessor, but the one who was blessed by God to be privileged to bear and give birth to Jesus. So Mary announces that the birth of Jesus will fulfill the great covenant that God had made with their father Abraham, that Abraham's descendants should possess the land as their inheritance and would become the channel through which the one who would bless the world would come. The birth of John brought great joy not only to Zechariah and Elizabeth, but to all of the neighbors and the relatives as well, for they realized that God had performed a miracle to make it possible for the barren to bear. On the eighth day, when it was customary to circumcise the child, they asked what name should be given to it. And his mother said, his name will be John, the grace of God. The, the relatives were surprised that he was not named for his father, Zechariah. And it almost appeared as though Elizabeth were denying that Zechariah was his father. So they consulted his father. And he called for a slate. And he wrote on it, his name is John. And his tongue was loosed, and he was able to praise God. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke prophetically. His prophecy was a prophecy of praise to God because the God of Israel had come to redeem his people. He raised up a Savior as he had promised in the house of David. And the prophecies concerning this one were being fulfilled. Zechariah spoke to his child and said that he would be called a prophet of the Most High. He would receive his authority from God as the Old Testament prophets had. Further, he would go before the Lord to prepare the way for him. He was the one who had introduced the Messiah to Israel. Mary remained in Judea until after the birth of John. When she returned to Galilee, it could no longer be hidden that she was expecting a child. Joseph had two options. He could call down the penalty of the Mosaic law for unfaithfulness and condemn her and have her stoned. Or he could go before the judges before whom their legal contract uh, uniting them as husband and wife had been drawn up and have that contract annulled. And Joseph, because he was righteous, did want, not want to expose Mary publicly, and he decided that he would divorce her. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him with an announcement that changed his actions. Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The angel further announced that Mary would give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The fact that Joseph was to give the name to Jesus signified that Joseph was to become the legal father of the Lord. This name, Jesus, the Deliverer, was to be given to him because he would save his people from their sins. All of this was in fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel was not the name the child would bear, but it reveals the person. He is the Son of God who has become flesh. Joseph was perfectly obedient to that which the angel had commanded, and he took Mary to be his wife. Mary had been subject to the will of God in agreeing to become the mother of our Lord. And now Joseph is submissive to the will of God, in which he agrees to marry Mary and become the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. 